It's the world. I'm in PE world. What happened to TSM Daquan? What's up with y'all, man? I hope everybody doing good out there. You know what I'm saying? Mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is. You feel me? It's crazy, though, because uh, I just, just, just text my bro. I'm like, yo, I, like, I miss Daquan, bro. Like, we used to watch that nigga all the time, you know, on Twitch, day in and day out, bro. Like, definitely used to be the highlight of my days, bro, on some 2017 shit, bro. Like, Watching him stream every day, just good energy, positive dude. You know, gave the, gave the younger audience like a good, you know, good advice on everything, females, all types of shit. So I'm just giving, you know, bro his flowers. You know what I'm saying? I hope everything's good with him, but let's check this vid out. Need bro to hop back into the game. TSM Daquan would post a video on his Twitter titled Sundays with a sad face, playing the song Lonely in his car while zooming in on a Chick fil A fast food restaurant. This video, seemingly insignificant at the time, would be one of the last videos he would post before completely disappearing off the internet. And when considering the depressive nature of his final internet moments, it creates numerous questions and concerns relating to his current whereabouts. What happened to TSM Day 1? There have been other popular videos posted on the topic by both that Denver guy and Red X Logic. However, these I saw both of these. Dated, and there have been numerous advancements and updates in the story that are yet to be discussed. The current state of his mental health, overlook clips that almost perfectly outline where TSM Daquan ended up, and most notably his update in November 2020, which gave everyone an indication as to where TSM Daquan is today. While incorporating these new advancements, as well as other points that have previously been missed, let's talk about what happened to TSM Daquan. The GOAT, man, for real. Before Daquan would go missing, before he would begin to struggle with various mental health problems, hell, even before Fortnite Season 2, everything seemed to be going well for Daquan. He was a humble new streamer with an ability to dominate Season 1 solo V squads better than almost any other player. The good days, man. <laughs> the good old days, bro. Learn his skills by playing other various games such as Destiny, Black Desert Online, and most notably, Guns the Duel. When Fortnite came out, it was a game whose skill set was very similar to a game I played in the past called Guns. You guys. While playing solo V squads in the first month of Daquan's streaming journey, he would accidentally leave Phil on, which would result in him being queued up with popular streamer Dakotas. I left Phil on on accident. And I got into Dakota's game. Dakota's and Daquan would perform extremely well together in that first game. I got 16 kills, he had a ton. We slayed out, so I was like, dang, this guy, he taught me like, he was doing crazy pyramid strats, I remember it, man. Leading them to add each other and ultimately become good friends. Daquan and Dakota's would then yeah, go to yeah, 27 right? squad games in a row, beating the world record of 26 that had previously been set at the time. Dakotas, who was already a popular streamer at this point, noticed Daquan's skill and would ultimately invite him into the Fortnite Invitational competitive scene. The first Fortnite skirmishes that were going on, like the practice ones, I got him into it because 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 I was like, dang, this guy's super good, you know? And uh, I think he could really give people a run for their money, so I, I got him invited to it. Daquan would go on to win many of these competitive games. Let's go, baby! What <laughs> I told y'all! What I told y'all! Let's go! It's nothing, and considering these pro matches were being played by other large YouTubers and streamers, Daquan would receive passive exposure and begin to get recognized as one of the best players in the content creation sphere, while simultaneously getting a reputation for being the founder of the double pump strategy. He was Facts. the originator of the, of the double pump. Like, nobody was rocking double pump at that point. Daquan literally came in and just double They, they had to nerf that shit, y'all. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Let's go. You don't know about the WP, baby. This ultimately led his streams and videos to grow in size, and Daquan would receive a whopping 1.9 million views during his first month on YouTube, providing him with the status of instant sensation. This would turn into 4 million the next month, then 10 million, then 20 million displaying his continual ability to grow in popularity. Daquan stood out from the crowd not only for his skill, but also for his bizarre sayings while playing Yeah, game. fact. Come here, boss! Come here, dog, boss! What are you doing, brother? My, <laughs> My ground now! This game's trash! Hey, brother, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't care if they're tall or skinny, I want them toes, yeah! Then, the good days, bro. Content creation journey, he would break the world record for the most kills in a single game. No! 
which cemented him as one of the best players in the history of Fortnite. This increased his viewership once again and would give Daquan the ability to play with other pro players such as Ninja, High Distortion, and Pokimane. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Easy points, girls. Oh my god, we did it! His increased status led Daquan to be invited into TSM, forming a team with Mitt and Hamlins while also moving into a streamer house together. Chef Mitt, <laughs> Chef Daquan, and Chef Ham Sus. Okay, really? <laughs> <laughs> All of these elements continued the exponential growth of TSM Daquan, leading up to a peak in August 2018 where he would receive 68 million views and Daquan seemed to be happier than ever. I'm the type of person that's like just, I'm just happy to be alive. Not a lot of people are like that. Just happy to be alive. However, it would be in this same month of August 2018, after hitting his peak in viewership and becoming comfortable with his fans, that TSM Daquan revealed some details about his past, giving us an indication of where he might end up in the future. And then I got extremely sick, bro. Like, I got extremely sick. I was sick for three and a half years. Like, very, very, very sick. On the 14th of August 2018, TSM Daquan would upload a video titled Daquan Depression and Sickness, explaining that in the past, he struggled with an unknown sickness that caused various symptoms, rendering him unable to function as a normal person from day to day. At all times, it just felt like I was being stabbed in my stomach. I had been to so many different doctors, so many different specialists, and like nobody could tell me what was wrong with me, right? This unknown sickness caused Daquan to cease both employment as well as exercise, stating that he was unable to do anything besides sit in his room for Damn. two and a half years. I had to quit my job, so I couldn't dedicate to the schedule or anything. You know, I, I literally couldn't do anything. I couldn't go to the gym anymore. I couldn't hang out with my friends. I was literally just sitting in my bed. Following this, Daquan got extremely depressed because the sickness had gone on for such a long period of time. Three months went by, and then six months went by, and then a year went by. And that's when I really started getting depressed. I was just, I was super depressed, man. Like, I feel it, yeah. Really but perhaps one of the most important things that Daquan said in this video was when Daquan said this. To this day, like, I still never knew what was wrong with me, and I still have those feelings sometimes in my stomach. Damn. But, like, I just kind of, like... I don't know, I just kind of like fight through it and ignore it as if it's not even there. He still felt that he hadn't fully overcome the sickness that at one point knocked him out of the game for three and a half years. And if he hadn't identified it, focused on and fixed the problem that had demolished his state in the past, what was stopping it from happening again in the future? Well, right. this is exactly what happened. In May of 2019, Daquan will post a tweet stating, the worst type of stomach pains are the ones where you don't know what the cause is, so you're just always in pain slash nauseated and you don't know how to make it go away. Damn. Sorry for the lack lately. It's high key driving me insane. Hopefully- I remember that. I remember you tweeted that. Trying. Now, it was obvious what this meant on the surface, at least anyway. Daquan was back in pain and it was obviously hindering his ability to stream as well as make content. But just as previously mentioned, this was only the surface. There was clearly a bigger issue here. This was also a pretty good indicator for the return of Daquan's depression. And the reasoning dated all the way back to when Daquan was at his peak in August 2018. Daquan first uploaded that video titled Depression and Sickness in August 2018, which if we recall detailed his past health problems as well as the fact that he was now feeling much better. Now, let's once again look at the social blade of Daquan and look at the month of August 2018. It happened to be the best month that he had ever had on YouTube and would be the final month before his viewership began to decline. Now, why is this significant? Well, when things are going well, we party. We get more confident and we feel as though nothing could ever go wrong. For Daquan, during his peak, depression likely felt like a distant memory, a place to which he wouldn't return given his newly found status. But the unfortunate truth behind Twitch and YouTube is that success can flip at a moment's notice. Definitely could, what yeah. What happens to content creators when what they've built begins to come crashing down? Well, certainly a decrease in enthusiasm on the light end and the possibility of a full-blown depressive episode on the heavy end. And considering Daquan was already prone to such events, there was certainly a possibility that a decline in popularity might trigger another depressive episode for TSM Daquan. Between his peak month of August 2018 and May 2019, the month during which he would announce that he was back in pain, Daquan's viewership would drop from 68 million views per month to 20 million views per month. Damn. Now it's hard to determine whether his depression was causing the drop in views or whether the drop in views was causing his depression, but it's more than likely a mix of both. Daquan was able to observe a linear drop in his viewership almost every every month, and even the most optimistic creator could tell that the eventual outcome of such a decline would be a dead channel. Only one month after tweeting about the return of his pain in May 2019, Daquan would take his first extended break from streaming and uploading, which resulted in another extremely sharp decline in views from 20 million per month to Well, I mean, of course, like, if you ain't uploading, like, you gotta think, 
you know, bro was streaming all, almost every day and shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, I remember, like, if I missed his stream, hopping up on YouTube and then just watching the videos. But you got to think, like, if he ain't feeling good and ain't uploading videos, obviously he going to have a decline. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it was because of something else he was having to do, Klein. ...tweets about his mental health, such as, We starting to feel good, baby. I'll be back soon. Missing love, y'all. Thanks for all the love I see everywhere I look. I feel better than I used to. Not to where I want to be because I'm not 100%, but I miss y'all so much that it depresses me. A little more time and we lie. I feel like I have so much more energy in everything than before, and I honestly can't wait to be back soon. Now, despite the optimism in the tweets, the tweets still had a depressive aura and tone attached. Plus, it's important to apply the age-old saying of actions speak louder than words. And if Daquan was really feeling any better, he would have just gone live instead of tweeting about how he was apparently in a better place. And despite saying that he was in a better place, Daquan wouldn't stream for another month and a half, finally breaking his streak with a toxic grandpa stream, somewhat displaying an improvement in his emotional state. Daquan's return to Twitch will be followed by a return to uploading on YouTube, beginning with a video titled Where Have I Been, in which he would once again detail that his break from both streaming and YouTube was owed to a further decline in his health. During my whole time grinding, I was dealing with all those health issues, even through those 16-hour days or however long it was. On top of this, Daquan detailed the passing of various family members and close friends. I lost my grandma on both my mom and dad's sides. I lost one of my favorite aunts, bro. Two more of my friends passed away from gun violence that we had all escaped before, you know? Once again, owing to the decline be, of uh. mental health. However, there was another important fact slipped into this Where Have I Been video that related to the health of not only Daquan, but also his girlfriend. She ended up eating at a restaurant and catching E. coli, which is pretty much something that you get when, um, like, somebody prepares your food and doesn't wash their hands, you know? Now, the main problem with Daquan's girlfriend catching E. coli was that it had caused further problems by the time it was found by the doctors. Damn. The doctors took so long to find it and that she was getting, like, beginning symptoms of other infections stemming Damn. from E. coli, you know, like, the beginning. After two months of on and off streaming, Daquan will post on Twitter, My girl has life-threatening health issues now and it's low-key destroying my mental state, man. We go to so many doctors and hospitals and specialists and they have no idea what to even say to us anymore. I don't know what to do anymore and she needs help. Which will once again be accompanied by yet another break from streaming and content creation. During his hiatus, Daquan will post a tweet longer explaining that 2019 wasn't really his year. But by January 2020, Daquan would be back in quote 100% full swing of things and that 2020 was going to be his year. However, and then you know what came. A scenario where his actions would not match up with his words. Daquan would not even post a single video in January 2020. He would simply continue his break and not post a video until the 26th of February, almost a quarter of the way through the year. Not only would Daquan take two months to post his first video in 2020, this would be the only Fortnite video he would upload all year. As in March, he would upload a singular Warzone video, post a tweet about not having any toilet paper, and completely disappear, the point at which many consider Daquan to have quit content creation. Daquan's disappearance this time would last eight months from March 2020 to November 2020. At the end of his eight-month hiatus, Daquan would post on both Twitter and Instagram stating that he was feeling better than he had in years, always thankful. Daquan was back. He was feeling better than ever. Was this the return of TSM Daquan, the famed Fortnite streamer? Well, still ain't seen him. Since Daquan posted this four months ago, he hasn't streamed, made any videos, or posted anything else on social media. And I think the hard reality we all have to accept is that Daquan often talks about feeling better or that he's back on the mend or this year is going to be his year. But as mentioned earlier in the video, he seems to be somewhat notorious for saying things that rarely match up to his actions. For this reason, Daquan stating that he's feeling better than ever could just be another statement to bring comfort to his fan base, similar to his tweets in June 2019 that preceded the hiatus, showing that they really weren't all that true. Now that's one reason for why Daquan might be yet to return to streaming or content creation. The things he has said simply don't align with how he truly feels, and he's not in a mental position to return to content creation for the time being. Because of the way that I was feeling, like I never felt like streaming or anything. However, here might be another reason as to why Daquan is yet to return to content creation. What's that? It actually has to do with the game Fortnite itself. Yeah, it's I just but now. the feeling of waking up, so <laughs> ready to play a game that I fell in love with, and I haven't had that feeling in a very long time. <laughs> Facts. I started to dislike Fortnite once I started playing pro. As mentioned, by late 2019, just before Daycon would disappear off the internet, he mentioned that he didn't even enjoy playing Fortnite anymore. And considering that was over a year and a half ago now, with many people stating the game is now worse than it was back then, what incentive would he have to return? 
Perhaps one of the main issues is that Daquan simply wouldn't have a game to stream if he were to return. We see this with people like Ninja who's playing Valorant and Tifu who's playing Minecraft. Once they got bored of the <laughs> they kind of went into limbo. And just... I've definitely seen Tifu on Minecraft doing speedruns, man. I feel it though, bro. I might want to play Fortnite every day. Stream whatever because they knew they had to stream something. But if Daquan doesn't have to stream, then perhaps without a game to play, he's just deciding not to stream at all. And the reward from streaming a random game simply just wouldn't be worth the pain that it puts Daquan through. The most likely reality is that it's probably a mix of both for TSM Daquan. A decline in his mental and physical health, as well as a lack of desire to play Fortnite once again. And until yeah. Daquan gets himself out of the rut that he's in, it's unlikely that he'll return to content creation anytime soon. However, the best thing is that TSM Daquan got out of this before, and it's likely that he'll get out of it once again. He even had some excellent advice for his own scenario. The worst thing that you can do is let whatever situation you're going through hold you down, bro. You gotta. And I think we're all hoping that Daquan takes on some of his own advice from back in the day. You gotta WT up about your situation, or you're always gonna be like that. Because it's Dub safe key, to say that seeing a return from the great Daquan Loco would be a benefit to everyone on the platform. No matter how you feel, no matter how depressed you are, bro, you gotta, you gotta chase something. You gotta move towards something positive. That's literally, or, or the, literally the depression is just going to continue. Damn, man. I'm hoping, to, you know, wishing the best for the boy da uh, Daquan, man. I know he got to feel the uh, the universe colony, man. We, we, we think about that boy. I even went on his Instagram. Y'all swear it's crazy. I just was talking to my boy about Daquan. Like I said, and this video just popped up, bro. So weird, bro. So weird how shit like that happened. But I was looking on his Instagram and, like, there's people commenting like five minutes ago, six minutes ago, seven minutes ago, eight minutes ago, just in order. Like, bro, we miss you. We miss you. So, shit, man. Hope everybody taking care of themselves out there mentally and everything. You know what I'm saying, man? Because it do be like that sometimes. Facts, man. But, you know, you got to keep pushing forward out here, man. Until next time, Mitch. The world.